So I got this really interesting question that says, Hector, is it possible to report in these type of transactions? And this was a video on invoicing using uh, pricing rules so the items automatically change in price and base where the customer is, right? So just some context there. Uh, for a customer to have a client uh, that will qualify for a rebate, uh, a rebate means the vendor is subsidizing part of the sale. The customer buys from us at a rebated price of $8, uh, even though we supposed to sell it for $10. And then I want to track how much money does the vendor owe me, how much money does the vendor have to pay me back for selling it to the client at eight instead of 10. Uh, and that's kind of what I, how I interpret this question. So I'm going to give you a way you can do this. It's not perfect, but it might uh, solve this issue. So let's start by creating an invoice. Let me go into create invoices here and I'll pick a customer. Just pick that customer there. And under item code, I'm going to pick one of these items here. I think I have an item that's exactly $10. Which one is it? That one right there. So this item is, let's say, uh, $8 is a good example here. So if I had price levels turned on, these prices will automatically uh, shift. And if you don't know what price levels are, I'll put a link on the description where I explain how price levels work. But price level will uh, allow you to select a base price or to select a discounted price uh, that's in here. Now, the question was, I want to track that my vendor owes me money. So I need to know how much money does uh, my vendors, I guess the person that I originally buy these items from has to pay me for discounting my client. So the only way to make this happen is you cannot use price levels. You have to sell it at the base price. It's a really important concept. And then you have to create a secondary item to track that, uh, that $2 discount completely separate. So I'm gonna go into item code here and I'm gonna create a new item. I'll go to add new, and then I can really create this item as any type to make things easier. I'm gonna make it an other charge because I'm gonna make him another charge, another item. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this one vendor rebate. So I'm putting VR in front of it, just so I know that's a vendor rebate. And then afterwards, I'm gonna put the full item name. So let's say that's gonna be edge, edge hyphen CL. So I'm copying the exact item name i'm just putting vr for my own internal uh purposes and we can go back and check how that works then under account what i'm going to do in this case i want to create a new account so let me create a new account and this is called vendor rebates receivables okay so this is money that my vendors owe me account type will be an other current asset because i assume my vendor will pay me those rebates within a year for the most part. So I'll make it a current asset and then I'm gonna click on save and close. Okay, so that item is just designed to do this. Now in this case, under amount, I could put it, leave it blank and then change it manually. Or if I always know that this is gonna be a $2 discount, I'll just put negative two. And click okay. Because I will know automatically that this item will always be negative too. So if, if it's subject to change, where maybe have pr different price levels, and I want to manually choose that number, just leave it blank, and then you can use the price levels to preview it and kind of see what the rebate's supposed to be, and, uh, and uh, just change it there. But in this case, I know it's always going to be $2, at least implied from the comments question was, uh, we always know what the vendor rebate on this item is going to be. So essentially, I am going to have basically my entire item list duplicated with VR version other charges with different dollar amounts. So I know that that uh, is owed to me. Now, if my vendor, if I have multiple vendors that owe me rebates, maybe I want to, instead of use VR, use uh, that actual vendor's name so I know which is the vendor that owes me. Let me do another example here real quick. Let's say I'm going to pick this item and let's say I'm going to take this item name, copy it, and I'll create a new item right under it. I'm going to keep the same process, do an other charge, and then I'm going to call this one ABC. Let's say, for example, that is a different vendor called ABC. And I'm going to add the item name there. Maybe I can even call this one VRABC or something like that, just so I know 
um, how to track it, okay? There's uh, multiple versions of this, so we'll try different, different ones and you can tell me or you can decide which you like better. So I'm going to pick uh, where's my other current asset for my vendor receivables. There it is. And then I'll click OK. So let's say essentially I have two different vendors that would owe me a discount. Let's say this vendor will owe me a $7 discount. So essentially I'm selling this guy for 8 and this guy for uh, 50 and I'm tracking the discounts as two separate lines. I'm going to go ahead and click on save. Perfect. And then I'm going to go into reports. I'm going to go to custom reports. Then I'm going to click on transaction detail. I'll click on that. Then I'm going to click on dates. I'll click on all. Under filters, I'm going to click on filters up here. I'm going to go into item. Then I'm going to click on the drop down menu and click multiple items. In this case, I can also do other charges, but there might be other other charges in there. So I click OK. So there's multiple things there with other charges. I'm just focused on maybe those two that have the VR on it. So I'm going to click on customize report filters. And instead of doing all other charges, assuming that you are using multiple types of other charges, I'll just click on multiple items up here and then I'll type here VR. So by narrowing it down to VR, I can now just select you know, all the items that are going to be part of that group. Then I'll click OK and OK. And there it is. Very, very simple. It tells me uh, you know, all the amounts that are owed to me. Now, unfortunately, let me click on Customize Report and enable the item column real quick. Unfortunately, one of the challenges we have with this is that um, this will not group it by vendor because there was no vendor information in here whatsoever. So there's multiple ways to, to do this. Uh, one of the things that we can do is we can create sub accounts in that chart of accounts for vendor rebates. So I'm going to go into list chart of accounts, go into vendor rebates and create a new account. And we'll make this a other current asset. Click OK. And then we'll call the first vendor VR vendor just to kind of simplify this. And let's put this under vendor receivables. So let's say VR is one of the name of our vendors. Save a new and then I'll do ABC vendor. Make that a sub account of vendor receivables. Hit save and close. So I set, split them up into different ones. Let me uh, modify those two items. So I'm going to go into each of these items here. So let's go into this one. I'm going to edit it and then send it to the appropriate sub account. Click OK and yes. And then go to the next one here. Right click edit. And I'll click on the drop down and do uh, the other one here, ABC, and then click OK and yes. So when I go back into that report I was looking at, now I can actually uh, split this up by vendor. Let me um, pull that report again. So reports, custom reports, transaction detail, dates, all, filters. I can go to item. Click on multiple items, search by name. I'm assuming I'm using I'm using the the VR code as a way to search it. Click OK and OK, and then I click on total by. I'll click on account list, and that will break both of them down by vendor. So I will actually know the total by vendor, and I'm using this the balance sheet way. Let me show you an entirely different approach to this. Let me go back into this invoice. I'm going to get rid of these extra lines that we're using to track uh, these vendors. I have some, I know some people watching this video are like, I really don't want to see that second line in there. I don't want to break it down that way. Maybe I don't want to show it to the customer. I just want to manage these a bit different. So I'm going to go into the item and put here $8 and $50. So I'm basically putting the rebated amount, the net amount the customer is going to buy. I'm going to go ahead and click on save save and leave it like that. So, so far I have no tracking mechanism to know how much my vendors owe me in rebate uh, for this, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work this out through custom fields. I'm going to go into the item list here. I'm going to double click on any of the items. It really doesn't matter which item you double click on. Then I'm going to click on custom fields. Now there's a whole bunch of custom fields in this uh, sample file but I created two fields. One is called rebate vendor 
another one is called rebate amount. If I click on define fields, this is where I can set them up with QuickBooks Enterprise specifically. I can even uh, create a drop down menu where I can drop down my vendors from there. So with enterprises works much different than any other way. But um, Pro Premier will still let you do custom fields, just it won't let you do the drop downs. So let me hit OK. And OK, so once I set this two up, now I know my custom fields are set up and they're item level custom fields. Then I'm going to customize uh, this invoice. And I'm going to go into columns here, columns tab, and then I'm going to enable my rebate vendor and rebate amount. I'm gonna only going to use the first column, the screen column, because I don't want them to print. So I'm going to enable them only on the screen side, only visible for the end user using QuickBooks, not to the person seeing the invoice. For the person seeing the invoice, they're going to see just the net amount, what they're going to pay in the first place. Hit OK. And that opens up those two uh, custom fields. So now at this point, I can say, well, this one is going to be a VR vendor who's going to owe me $2. It's very manual, but that's how you do it. And then this one's going to be ABC Corp, who's going to owe me $7. So if you don't get the drop down menu because you're working on QuickBooks Pro or Premiere, you would just have to type the vendor's name there and make sure you're, com you're consistent. Um, so when you pull the reports, the information is consistent throughout. Let me just uh, do a couple more items here, just for more fun here. VR vendor, let's say this is $8, and let's lower this by eight bucks. So I'm manually lowering the amount. And then I'll pick another item here. Let's pick uh, that guy. And let's say that this one's gonna give me $75 discount. We'll put here 300. And this is gonna be, let's say, ABC Corp, right? So I got multiple items. I'm netting the amount for the customer. I'm keeping track of how much money it's being rebated. And essentially my vendor owes me that money. And I'm keeping it in custom fields that are hidden. So when I look at the invoice, the customer doesn't see that. That's only internal use only. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save and close. Yes. Then I'm gonna go into, let me close out of here. Then I'll go to reports, custom reports, transaction detail. For now, I'm gonna click on dates, all, filters. I'm gonna select transaction type. Then I'm gonna go into invoice. Then I'm going to go to display. I'm going to search for these two custom fields that I created, rebate vendor and rebate amount. So I'm going to turn these, these two on and then I click OK. So this is going to give me all the transactions, all the invoices, and only the one, the transactions that contain that information are going to go uh, show here at the end. So I'm going to go to customize report and do one more filter go to filters and then go to account and then I'm going to limit it to only show me my sales portion. I don't want to see the cost of goods sold, the original cost, none of that stuff. I'm going to come in here and go into all ordinary income accounts. So that should give me a narrow down that information. And then I click OK. So that's going to give me the four lines here uh, that I need. So I can collapse some of these things here if I want to. Just kind of simplify my report. So I'm just gonna collapse them all. I'm gonna keep my customer's name, transaction number, date, to say this is all important. And I'm also going to, let me close the debit column. And I'm also gonna go to customize report and add the item. So I wanna see the item too, and then click okay. So now I have the items here. I have the vendor that's gonna give me the rebate, the dollar amount, and whatever the customer ended up paying for it. Now, one thing that might be missing here, which would be kind of interesting, is to know the original sales price before the vendor rebate. That could also be solved with custom fields. So let me go into item list here, double click on any item, go back into custom fields. And then let's say, for example, this third custom field here, I'm gonna use it for uh, the original price. I'm gonna go to define fields. I'm gonna change this to original price before rebate and then I click OK and OK and OK. So that creates the custom field. I'm going to go back into this invoice. I'm going to edit that. Uh, we got a formatting, customize data layout again, bring in that 
third custom field, original price before rebate. Again, I could include that for the customer's view or maybe not. Let's go ahead and do it. So now my customer is going to see the original price before the rebate. I could probably change the order of this a little bit. Let me put that maybe um, in the fourth space here. So original price before rebate. Let me put the quantity. Where is the quantity? I'm just going to organize this in a way that it makes sense. Let's put that here. Okay. And original price before rebate. Keep ordering this until, okay, that's what I want it. So original price before rebate, price each. So price each, we'll call it net price. And maybe we'll make this price before rebate. And then the layout designer here real quick. Just gonna expand these so they make a bit more sense when we're looking at them. Perfect. Okay, so now I got the, my price before rebate, which in this case was gonna be 10, let's do 0 0.00. And then this was gonna be 57.00. This would be 38.00. And this is 375.00. So at this point, I'm, I'm showing the net price the customer will pay, the price before the rebate, the rebate amount, which is hidden. And then I click on preview and okay. And these are all manual calculations. So depending on how you wanna display this uh, to your customer, whether they wanna see the price before rebate or the price after, these are all multiple choices, but it's the custom field really that I want you to be looking at and paying attention in this case. So I hit save and close. And then we go back into this report. I'm gonna click on customize report and add the price, original price before rebate click OK. So now I have all the information that I need. All right, let me just resort this here. So I got my original price before rebate. I have my rebate amount. And I have in the credit side, this is the actual amount that I charged. And then I have the rebate vendor. OK, so this will give me tons of great information for me to create uh, the reports for me to break this down afterwards. So I can export this into Excel and I can group my sales by vendor A, vendor B, I can look at the original sales price before. I can just see the rebate amounts. That that type of stuff would have to be done in Excel if you're working with uh, custom fields. But that's just another way we can try to approach a solution to that exact same problem. So hopefully that helped and maybe you learned something extra in the process.